between the Arctic blast of air we are now seeing and all the snow, they are reminders of how quickly winter weather can turn deadly, especially for the elderly. And there are many things every family member or caregiver needs to keep in mind. And joining us this morning is Ron DeQuilla. He is with Assisted Living Services. So thank, thank you very much for being here. So the first thing, tell us a little bit about the company. Yes, well, thank you for having me. Uh, basically, we have a, a home care agency. We provide services throughout Connecticut called Assisted Living Services. And we have a second company called Assisted Living Technologies in which we have some wireless, uh, primarily sensor-based technologies that help seniors and people with disabilities age in place. And we're going to get to some of those in just a little bit. Yeah. But first, what are some of the risks that you find this time of year, especially with the elderly? Right. Well, I did want to focus on the issue of uh, individuals caring for someone with Alzheimer's disease that might be at high risk of wandering. Uh, there's uh, approximately 5 million people throughout the United States that have Alzheimer's disease. And of that number, about 60% will wander at some point during the course of their disease. So they go out there, they're wandering around, they may not have a jacket, they're out right. in the elements, so that is a concern. Something else, too, we should mention is, you know, someone may think if they're up there in age, oh, I can go out and grab the mail or I can grab a, a, the newspaper, and they slip on ice and then they're laying there until someone finds them. I mean, this is also dangerous. Correct. So it's important to have a personal emergency response system, you know, the button you can push and it can access help in an emergency like that. And basically, if it's snowing and it's a risk situation, they really shouldn't take that risk. Wait until someone else can get the mail, uh, utilize help from around you. Uh, as far as home care, probably one of the biggest things that you could do in terms of providing care, especially to someone with Alzheimer's disease that's living alone, is seek out the help from an agency that can provide a live-in caregiver uh, that's employed by the agency, supervised by the agency, uh, trained by the agency in Alzheimer's care, and that's probably one of the best components to provide safe care for a person that might be wandering. And it can alleviate some of the worry for the family. So if someone, if a family decides, okay, we need to bring in a caregiver for mom or for dad, what are some things they should keep in mind initially? Well, I think an agency that employs the caregiver is important. Uh, someone that listens to the individual, listens to what their needs are, that's always uh, very important. Uh, you know, that's what you want in an agency, is someone that really cares about you and wants to know what your issues are so they can address those issues. And people can obviously contact the Department of Social Services, consult professionals, look at costs, that's a big thing. And then the yes. other thing is the technology, the technology to complement the care. And you, you touched on that earlier. You yes. have some of the stuff here. What are some of the things that people should be keeping in mind when it comes to this? Sure. Uh, well, back on cost, for one second, uh, some people may not be able to afford home care and in trying to utilize uh, the resources around you you could contact the Department of Social Services they do have a program called the Connecticut Home Care Program for Elders uh, that help to pay for these types of services another thought is to uh, utilize if for example the person was a veteran there's a veterans aid and attendance pension program available uh, to help folks and a third option might be if the individual has a long-term care policy, uh, often they cover these types of services. So there are resources out there that Definitely. people should be checking into. All right, mm -hmm. so back to the technology. What are some key things that really can be helpful and, and life-saving? Yes. Well, one of the things is if the individual is living with someone else and they tend to wander, go near a doorway, we do have sensors that are wireless motion sensors. Uh, we also have contact sensors that go on doors. And basically, they're very easy, relatively inexpensive to, to put in place. And they would alert a caregiver in another part of a house if someone's about to wander. Was to try to get out of right. the house. All right, what else? Well, we also have uh, new emerging uh, types of technologies that are uh, GPS uh, technology-based that are wearable devices, such as this, which is a uh, wrist-worn device. Uh, it's waterproof um, and lockable if that's necessary. And then we have these new... Uh, devices. These are called smart soles, which are, they have an embedded uh, GPS chip in them. Uh, both of these devices have the ability for us to set up a geofence around the perimeter of the home. And if the person crosses that pathway, it sends an alert to a loved one so they can look up uh, where the person is on their cell phone, iPad, or computer and locate them quickly using GPS. Wow, so a lot of different technology that can be used and be very beneficial and obviously give family members a peace of mind. And obviously, if someone thinks it's time to bring in a caregiver, they should do just that and start doing their homework. Yes, so, that's correct. All right, very good. Thank you for being here with us this morning. We Thanks certainly for appreciate me. it. And for more information, all you have to do is go to WTNH.com, click the On Air tab, and pull down to the Good Morning Connecticut weekend section.